I'm here today to present my research titled Correlation of Preoperative Hippocampal Volume Measured with Magnetic Resonance Imaging and Duration of Emergence from General Anesthesia in Elective Neurosurgical Patients. Emergence from anesthesia occurs in bottom-up fashion. That is, upon emergence, initially the subcortical structures and the limbic regions like hippocampus gets activated and eventually the cortex gets activated. The functional reserve index consists of components like education, working profile and leisure activities and these components determine the existing functional reserve of the patients and contribute to behavioral characteristics. The objectives of our study were to evaluate the correlation between preoperative hippocampal volume and functional reserve index with duration and pattern of emergence after general anesthesia. This study was conducted in our hospital over a period of two years. This was a prospective observational study, including patients greater than or equal to 18 years with preoperative MRI brain and a GCS of 15, and excluded the ones who had temporal lobe pathologies and hippocampus and amygdala excision. This study was funded by Indian Council of Medical Research. Apart from routine pre-anesthetic evaluation, we calculated hippocampal volumes and total brain volume using MRI preoperatively and calculated FRI using a questionnaire consisting of questions pertaining to education, working and leisure activities. The emergence characteristics were noted as phases of emergence and patterns of emergence using GCS and Riker sedation agitation scale at various time points from the point of turning of sevoflurane and further classified as smooth emergence, agitated emergence, and sedated emergence. We calculated preoperative hippocampal volume using T1 MP range brain sequence with the help of MATLAB's FSL and ITK SNAP softwares. And we standardized these hippocampal volumes with that of total brain volumes, which were calculated using computational analysis toolbox. We standardized the anesthesia technique by using sevoflurane and vecuronium in all of our patients and at the end of surgery, the MAC was noted and the neuromuscular blockade was reversed once stop count was equal to or greater than 3. Sevoflurane was turned off and the fresh gas flow of 6, limits, 6 liters per minute was set, allowing patients to wake up using no contact technique. Time duration from the point of turning of sevoflurane till the onset of different phases of emergence were measured. The statistical analysis was done using software R and correlation between hippocampal volume and emergence parameters were done using Spearman serpent correlation. We recruited 1,192 patients and a complete data of 125 patients were collected and analyzed. 100 patients underwent intracranial surgeries, 25 patients underwent spine surgeries in these 125 patients. These are the demographic profiles of our study population. The median age of our study population was 41 years. The median average of standard hippocampal volume was 2,249.16 mm cube and median years of FRI education was 9 years in our study population. These are the time taken in minutes for the onset of different phases of recovery after switching off of sevoflurane. The median extubation time was 13 minutes with the intercortal range of 9 to 16 minutes. We found significant negative correlation with average standard hippocampal volume to that of orientation, vocalization, and extubation. Whereas we found significant negative correlation with dominant standard hippocampal volume only with orientation and extubation. But we found significant negative correlation with most of the phases of emergence with FRI education. ROC was constructed for predictive accuracy of hippocampal volume for dichotomized extubation times with time greater than 9.2 minutes as delayed and less than 9.2 minutes as normal extubation. And we found volume less than 2000 millimeter cube for standard average hippocampal volume and volume less than 1920 uh, millimeter cube for standard dominant hippocampal volume predicted delayed extubation times with specificity of 90.6 and 87.5 respectively. We found significant positive correlation with average standard hippocampal volume to GCS greater than 12 in our study population and negative, significant negative correlation with FRI education and Riker less than 3. 
The previous studies done so far have shown that repeated exposure of zeofluorine leads to reduction in volume of hippocampus in rodent, whereas in it has also shown that patients with post-operative cognitive dysfunction had significant smaller hippocampal volumes. But none of the studies done so far have predicted pre-operative hippocampal volumes correlation to that of emergence. So in contrast to above studies, we studied brain and hippocampal volume before the study subjects were exposed to anesthetics. And we found patients with higher hippocampal volumes remained more conscious and led to earlier extubation and gaining orientation after switching of zeofluorine. And patients with higher years of education had faster recovery in various recovery parameters and patients with higher years of education were less sedated during recovery in our study. So these findings can be explained in consensus with this theory that better brain reserve capacity would help for faster emergence from anesthesia. Smaller sampling volume and study population, including predominantly neurosurgical patients, and these study population findings may not be reflective of the population who are not having intracranial pathologies are few of the limitations of our study. Thus, to conclude, neurosurgical patients with larger hippocampal volume led to earlier extubation, vocalization, and faster gaining of orientation after general anesthesia. And educated neurosurgical patients tend to have faster and smoother emergence from general anesthesia. Thus, knowing preoperative hippocampal volume and patient's educational status would assist to anticipate the duration and pattern of emergence from general anesthesia. However, further studies are required to elucidate the role of other deep gray matter structures in anesthetic emergence and effect of different anesthetics on patient outcomes. I thank organizing committee for giving me this opportunity 